This video is going to help you figure out how to get started in cybersecurity in one month. I'll be splitting these topics into a four week time frame, so hopefully it helps separate certain things at a high level. So even someone who is just starting out in cybersecurity and is a complete beginner is able to still learn and pick up different skills and tools that they haven't had experience on before. And for those of you who are interested, you can check out my course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity linked in the description below. So without further ado, starting off with week number one, this is going to be on foundational cybersecurity knowledge. Now, if you guys have been here on my channel for any amount of time, one of the best ways to get the most well-rounded cybersecurity experience in terms of just foundational knowledge is really just following a cybersecurity certification exam prep guide. I'm going to link below the official exam prep guide for the CompTIA Security Plus certification, which is one of the most popular cybersecurity certifications for beginners out there, whether you're in your early career or your entry level. Now, obviously, I don't expect you to study for and pass a, a certification within one week, but the study guide in general is really just a vocabulary list honestly of a few hundred terms slash topics and these topics are really everything you need to know just for your early career in cybersecurity because it covers such a broad breadth of topics for example when i was studying for my security plus i had graduated college and I was in my first cybersecurity job for about a year and by then I had really only done a few things in cybersecurity. A year really isn't a long time relative to someone's entire career but I was still able to learn different things during my job in that first year and after I was studying for my security plus exam which took me about four months or so to actually completely study for while still working full-time and doing all of my other real life things. I also have a video I made on how I passed my security plus certification as well as a video on generally how to pass your next cybersecurity certification linked in the description below. Basically studying for the security plus certification, what it really helped me do was fill in the gaps of knowledge that I didn't know. For example, I had never worked with web application firewalls, but that was on the security plus. So I was able to learn about them at least at a high level so that I could talk about them during an interview or if someone, for example, a coworker talked about them, that I could at least follow along the conversation rather than having to Google on the side to see what a WAF is. So this first week, just take some time going through the study guide. It doesn't have to be for the security plus, it could also be for the GSEC or any other big popular cybersecurity entry level certification that is generalized so that you're able to learn about topics across a multitude of different cybersecurity sectors from cryptography to malware to, to vulnerability management to identity and access management and even topics on security auditing and governance. Basically, there's going to be a cram week on studying different cybersecurity concepts so that you at least know the terms. And this is what's going to build your foundation. And personally, I took my security plus in 2020. And to this day, it still helps me during my cybersecurity interviews, specifically for the fact that anytime I'm looking for a new job or a new role, I go back to my security plus exam guide and basically go through it like a vocabulary list and go through the topics that don't sound familiar anymore or maybe I need some brushing up on. And that's how I study for my cybersecurity interviews for my actual job search. So I really think it's really important, especially for those of you who are in your early career. All right, I could obviously go on and on about the importance of going through these basic cybersecurity concepts, especially for those of you who don't come from a cybersecurity background, don't have a security degree or a security bootcamp. But for week number two, I would really spend this time learning the skills and tools needed for your job. Now, of course, this is going to depend on the type of role that you want to go into in cybersecurity. For example, if you want to be a pen tester, it's going to be very different from an SOC analyst. And that's going to be very different from a security auditor or a malware analyst. So what I would usually start with when you're at this point is is to pick a list of the top two or three jobs that you want to go into in cybersecurity. If you can whittle it down to one job, then that would honestly be perfect. But obviously, if you're just starting, then you may have a few roles in cybersecurity that you're interested in. But I would go on Google and just search the jobs that you want to go into and maybe even a company that you will want to apply for. For example, let's just use Google as an example. If you want to be a web pen tester at Google, then look up this specific job and then go on there and then check to see their job description, the types of skills that they're looking for, the tooling that they're looking for, the experience level of the candidates that they want to hire. I really feel like so much information can be gathered just from the job description itself, whether it be tools that the company actually uses, the skills that they expect, as well as the types of experience that, that they want their candidates to have, whether they be educational or experiential. Then after doing a bit of Googling, make kind of like a short list of the five to six tools that seem to be the most common or pop up the most often that you've seen based on the tools that you want to apply for. 
And what you're looking for is going to be overlapping tools. For example, if a company uses a specific vendor for vulnerability management or a specific vendor for a web scanning tool, then those are the tools that you might want to look into or dig into a bit more. And it also gives you an idea of what may be more popular for the types of companies that you want to apply to, whether they be big tech companies or finance companies, security consulting companies. So these are all things to keep in mind while you're doing this shortlist creation. So let's say at the end of it, you have a list of about three to five skills that you want to hone in on. And I would just take this week and spend some time just looking at courses, watching videos on YouTube. If they have a free version of the course, whether it's community edition or if it's open source, which is even better, then I would really look into and download those tools to get that hands-on experience. What I really like about that was in general is that the field has a lot of information sharing um, just around the community in general so for example if you're interested in red teaming or pen testing then maybe you want to try some try hack me challenges or hack the box challenges even if you don't know where to start there are a lot of walkthroughs that other people have created or in cybersecurity and they create these guides to kind of walk beginners through different hacks or different challenges that you can complete on these websites and this is a great way to kind of get an idea of what other people are thinking while they're completing these challenges if you're interested in reverse engineering, you can check out CrackMe's, which is a great way to which is a great way to get some experience using reverse engineering tools, which is also something that I am currently studying. And maybe if you're interested in blue teaming, then there are sites out there like Let's Defend IO that give you kind of a mock environment for for incident response and different phishing attacks and various different things. If you're interested in more on the SOC or the blue team side, so there's really just a wealth of knowledge and platforms and applications out there that you can use to get started in cybersecurity and I really think that this is helpful for people who have some experience in cybersecurity but also those of you who may be just starting out there is a huge need for cybersecurity talent and honestly the community knows that there's even been times when I have been working on a capture the flag and, and I found some kind of helpful person or resource through reddit or twitter and and people are actually willing to help you and I think this is one of the best pros of just being in the cybersecurity field in general Obviously, people aren't just going to give you the answer to ACTF, but if you're reaching out, then there are a lot of people who are willing to give you hints or some kind of push to help guide you towards the right path. And of course, just using sites like YouTube and Googling different articles and walkthroughs and blogs are going to be a huge help on top of the official documentation for whatever tool that you're wanting to learn. And honestly, a lot of companies or vendors specifically that have some kind of cybersecurity tool that they want security professionals or security organizations to use, they typically have some kind of training. A lot of times it is free because they want people to adopt the usage of these tools. Sometimes you may need to create an account or start a free trial and that can open the door to a free training or some kind of course that they use to teach you how to use a specific tool. And that in itself can already be a huge helpful resource on top of all the free material that you're already using to learn. Our week number three is for scripting skills and command line. So obviously not everyone watching this video is going to want to learn how to script or code, but I really think that's one of the most important skills to have, whether you're working in cybersecurity or not. I think it's just one of the most in general sought after skills in technology, but obviously not everyone wants to learn how to code. So if you're not interested in coding, then I would take this week to learn basic command line tools. Or if you're feeling like really challenging yourself, then maybe learn some scripting and command line tools in the same week. So scripting versus coding, scripting is very lightweight. It can just be one Python script, one JavaScript file, while coding is typically going to be a full stack application with many different libraries and dependencies and everything else attached to it. So I'd really start out with scripting since it's typically going to be the skill that you're using more compared to coding, which is typically for full stack developers or software engineers. If you're learning how to script, if you're just starting out, then I would start out with Python just because the syntax is pretty easy to understand as a beginner. But if you already have some knowledge in Python, then I would also consider learning the basics of JavaScript, which is one of the most popular languages specifically for cybersecurity. I believe like 90 something percent of websites use JavaScript or run on JavaScript based libraries or frameworks. So definitely learn JavaScript. So it's definitely a very helpful language to learn. And you're also going to be using it a lot if you're going into pen testing. If you're feeling a little bit out of the box, then I would also consider something like bash scripting, which is more so on the terminal, but can also be very, very helpful especially if you're going into that system admin slash IT slash security engineering side. And in terms of command line tools, you can easily search up a list of the most popular command line tools to use as a security analyst, to use as a security engineer, as a web pen tester. There's going to be a 
lot of lists out there and and it really just depends on the role that you want to go into so so i don't want to throw out a list of command line tools that that you won't use on the job that you want to go into so remember google is always going to be your best friend so after you spend some time learning how to script maybe learning some basic command line tools and how to use them you can even get some experience creating your own scripts and there's many many lists out there as well for beginner cybersecurity projects that you can do on the command line or through scripting especially even try hackneys and hack the boxes that may need you to write some kind of custom script and this is a great way for you to get some practice all right for the last week on this list week number four this week is going to be dedicated to security design if you follow this list of the last three weeks then you kind of have bits and pieces of information so you have your foundational knowledge which is always going to be the most important is kind of feel like your baseline configuration for the information that you know about cybersecurity. and then the second week is your skills and tooling which is going to be again very helpful for hands-on application and then the third week is for scripting coding slash command line tools and this is going to give you that technical experience that that a lot of times you'll need for more in-depth roles as well as for passing your cybersecurity interview now this last topic for security design really ties everything together in my opinion and while i'm not completely sure if security design is the official phrase for this this is just the phrase that i use but this is really coming from my experience doing cybersecurity interviews so basically when you go into a cybersecurity interview sometimes there is an interview or an interview question specifically for security design where the interviewer asks you a question that is very broad and they'll ask you something like how would you secure a web application obviously there are hundreds of answers to this maybe even thousands and it is just so broad that that what they're really looking for is the depth of your knowledge so if you're able to say oh use https instead of http then obviously that is one very common answer but that may not go as in-depth as a interviewer might want so your job for week number four to study is really to go through many different security design scenarios this is going to be very similar to system design questions as a software engineer if you're familiar there's going to be different examples that you can also find online some of my favorites include the first one which is how to secure a web application another one is what happens when you go to a website another one could be how would you secure a packet going from the client to a server do all kind of examples of very broad questions that an interviewer could throw at you to test the waters of how deep that your knowledge goes and this is where the last three weeks of all of your learning and training is going to come in is going to come in handy because you're going to have to bring up tools you're going to have to bring up configurations you're going to have to bring up different cybersecurity concepts that you know maybe command line tools maybe you're creating some kind of custom script to check certain things Things. there's going to be so many different things that you can throw at this problem because it's so broad that's why i think this is really just one of the best and worst questions during a cybersecurity interview because because it really depends on how you approach the problem and how you approach the question now i will admit that i'm not a pro obviously at these questions someone who is entry level with zero years of experience will answer this question completely different from someone with 10 years of experience and is in their mid-career so honestly i wouldn't sweat the details i'll really just do a brain dump of everything that you think is good to solve a specific problem and since it's so broad you can really be as imaginative as you want obviously don't just make up random protocols or things like that but but it really is just a way to flex that muscle specifically for cybersecurity problem solving and this is going to be kind of like your gateway to to pass your next cybersecurity interview or help brainstorm and think of ways for you to flex that muscle to then be able to go into future conversations about cybersecurity concepts or how something should be built what security concerns that you need to consider and this is just a really great exercise to to be able to get you that practice to then be able to become an active member of those future conversations that you have all right so i've done a lot of talking in this video but hopefully this gave you guys an idea of where to start if you're just getting started in cybersecurity and have no idea where to actually begin because obviously cybersecurity is a very large field but i really think that focusing on these these four most foundational things in my opinion at least is going to be really helpful in just helping you get your foot in the door to at least help you get started on your way to that first job in cybersecurity and if you're interested you can check out my course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity linked in the description below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!